Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, welcome back. Students, basically in this video I am going to show you that how we can do analysis and design of a dam, okay? And this is a short video inshallah. And in this video basically I am going to show you the various forces which can be considered while we are doing the analysis and design of a dam, okay? So, the topic of presentation today, we can consider the major forces, okay? And in major forces, we will consider like water pressure, earthquake forces, wind forces, wave forces, felt forces, uplift forces, pressure and body forces. These are the basically the forces which is acting over a dam structure when they are subjected to um, uh, when when the when, when the uh, when the water is basically dam on the upstream side of a dam uh, of a dam, okay. So these are the forces which basically acting over here. Although there are many other secondary forces as well, but major forces are these forces, okay. And there are whenever we are designing basically our analysis doing analysis of a dam structure. So there are some forces which may be optional, like uh, we can say snow force, ice force, I don't consider here, but there will be an ice force, uh, like if we are designing a dam in such area where ice is dominant, so we have to consider ice as well, but I ignore it, clear? And we will consider some stresses, okay, as well. There are two types of stresses, normal stresses and principal stresses, okay? So this is a short lecture, okay? I am not giving the details, the proofs of these formulas which will be used, okay? So let's start. Basically, first of all, we have water pressure. Okay, and a water pressure basically when we dam water on the upstream side. Okay, you see here in this figure, like this is a dam structure. Okay, this is a dam structure, and when the water is basically dam on the upstream side. Okay, remember, a dam has a down downstream side as well as upstream side. So this is a dam. Water is here, remember, this is the water level, clear? This is the water level, so this is basically known as upstream side and this is basically known as downstream side, okay? So you must remember what is downstream side and what is upstream side, okay? So, here we see the water is, is uh, the water is damp here and this still water basically exerts hydrostatic pressure on this dam body and you see the distribution of that stress is force is basically they are in rectangular shape remember starting from zero and are attaining its maximum intensity at the bottom and its maximum intensity is basically nothing it is equal to you can say the maximum intensity of water pressure will be omega times h omega means density remember density times h so the total force basically which is acting over the dam structure it will be it will acting at a distance of h by 3 from the from the bottom and its amount will be equal to density times height square divided by 2 so this is the water pressure and we will consider okay uh, the next thing is the the next force is basically the uh, one one thing you must remember sometimes basically when we are constructing a dam structure we, we we basically provide this kind of upstream so this is basically to maximize uh, to, to utilize the water body forces for the stability of the dam okay what they basically mean you see here the water within this trapezoid shape remember there are the a heavy mass of water present here, okay, and this force is basically the water body which exerts in downward direction on this face of the dam, remember, and it causes, you can say, a balancing load, a balancing force which protects the dam from overturning, okay, so that is the key function you can say, there are some other functions, but uh, this is basically, we can say this is one of the function of this kind of arrangement which we provide to the dam upstream side and 
another force it is the same hydrostatic pressure okay so remember when we are doing the stability analysis of a dam structure we must consider this force this we must calculate this force which is considered to be in vertical loading and they are causing the stability of a dam class so this is very important okay that you must understand this class the next one is the water pressure below the base of the yes this is the uplet pressure this is the uplet pressure you must remember that as you all know that there is a seepage okay below or at the bottom of the dam so once water is basically uh, you 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 dam here you see this water so that water basically tries to escape in downward direction at the bottom of the dam okay this is how we call seepage so due to that seepage water exerting up stresses pressures okay uh, basically these are pressures where not stresses these are pressures so these pressure is basically exerted due to that seepage it is also called seepage pressures or you can say uplet pressures and remember these the resultant this, the the distribution of these uplet pressure is basically in this triangular manner okay you can see there is zero and there is maximum so the resultant will be act at a distance of b by 3 from this side or you can say 2 by 3 of that side because this is triangle okay so you must remember it and its magnitude will be equal to how we can calculate the resultant force so the resultant force due to uplet pressure will be equal to p u that is uplet pressure density of water remember density of water times h h is the total height of the dam okay and b is the width of the the dam divided by 2 remember this is uplet pressure clear the next pressure is the earthquake forces so earthquake forces when there is earthquake okay so due to earthquake acceleration basically inflations are produced both in horizontal direction and vertical direction so due to that basically what happens uh, earthquake forces are generated now there are two types of forces which are generated one is called hydrodynamic forces and the other one is called basically uh, the other one is called uh, that is earthquake forces in horizontal direction clear so you see this is this is this is the hydrodynamic pressure intensity okay because when the earth when a, when a dam structure is subjected to an earthquake forces let me show you this is a a dam structure okay and uh, let's say we say this is our dam okay this is our dam structure and there is water okay there is water it's do clear this is dam here clear are you getting the reservoir now when there is earthquake you know earthquake basically produces acceleration in this direction and you see earthquake produces acceleration in vertical direction okay so we will basically we will consider the earthquake coefficient pressure coefficient that is alpha v and alpha h remember we will use in calculation these alpha v and alpha h okay so this is earthquake coefficient for vertical acceleration and this is earthquake earth pressure coefficient for horizontal acceleration so due to earthquake the water of the body which is still here which is standing here basically in hydrodynamic forces are generated within the body of the water so the the distribution of that hydrodynamic pressures water forces are in parabolic shape okay and that parabolic basically distribution uh we we see basically hydrostatic pressure that are in linear shape okay the hydro hydrostatic pressure is basically in linear form but the hydrodynamic forces are in parabolic shape remember if we integrate this parabola okay we will got the resultant hydrodynamic pressure that is denoted by p e y remember and it acting at a distance of y from the from the water surface level remember so this is basically the equation p e y p y dot density times h which is the height of the dam and p y is a coefficient remember pressure coefficient you see here and 
PE by basically this is the hydrodynamic intensity. Remember, intensity, not pressure. Total pressure is this one. Total pressure is this one, but this is the hydrodynamic pressure intensity. Now, what is PV? How we can calculate PV? So, let me show you that this is the value of PV. Okay, this Y is basically the distance from the top. Okay, as I show previously, P is another constant or coefficient, and this is the total height. Remember, and this is the CM. 0.735 theta divided by 90 degree and what is theta basically theta is basically let me show you the dam let's say this is a dam structure and sometime as you see previously it provide basically a, a slope okay it provide an inclination clear so that inclination basically which form an angle with the bottom so that is angle theta Sometimes, if for example, the slope is n up, you can say this is the half of the dam, remember, let's say this is the half height of the dam, h by 2. So, if this is the half height of a dam, and this slope n just below that height, that half height, so we consider that theta, we don't consider that theta, I mean consider that the face of the dam is vertical, and we basically consider theta equal to 90 degrees. We say that this is not inclined, this is vertical. But if that inclination surface reaches to the middle portion, to the half portion or above the half portion, then we calculate this angle theta. Okay? And we uh, calculate that theta and, and third here and we got the same value. Remember, this is a very important step and you sh inshallah I will show you in calculation as well. Next is uh, the same thing I mentioned here. Okay? And this is the hydrodynamic pressure distribution you see here. And here something is very important I want to show you. Remember this is a dam structure and this theta is basically you, you see here. And remember this slope is basically we don't consider it. Okay, if the height, remember this, this inclined surface which you see here is below from this dotted line. This is the half height, remember. So we don't consider that theta. But if this inclined surface reaches to half height, but are sometimes more than, so we must calculate that data. Remember. Now, if you want to get the total pressure, so you need to integrate that pressure intensity over this whole parabolic area. You got your total pressure and remember, this pressure is very important and we will use this in question. Remember. PEY is the total hydrodynamic pressure and 0.726 times PE by the pressure intensity. Remember, this is hydrodynamic pressure intensity and this is force, you can say. And Y is the distance from the top of the surface. Remember. And the movement, the movement which is caused due to this hydrodynamic pressure is basically equal to 0.299. Okay, 0.29, sometimes 0.30. PE by that y square, remember. So, this is remember, the movement due to hydrodynamic pressure and the total hydrodynamic pressure, remember. We will use this, okay. Then, this is the hydrodynamic pressure. And one thing very important, as I already mentioned you, that when earthquake comes, basically, it produces vertical acceleration as well as horizontal acceleration. So, due to horizontal acceleration, you see hydrodynamic pressures, hydrodynamic forces, are basically they are causing us. Now, if earthquake basically happens and basically vertical acceleration occurs, so due to earthquake vertical acceleration, the, the, the body of the dam basically moves in upward direction as well as in downward direction. So, if earthquake acceleration basically, let's say they are in vertical direction, so as you see, when you ever you are disturbing a body from the second law of Newton, I think so, there will be inertial forces. And that inertial force is trying to, to balance the body. Okay? So what happens, basically the earthquake forces, uh, when, when the earthquake forces in upward direction, the inertial forces which is within the body, basically they are trying to, to, uh, to bring the body in equilibrium. So that's why in that case, basically, the, the inertial forces will be in downward direction, remember. And if 
the earthquake forces in downward direction, earthquake acceleration in downward direction, remember the initial forces will be in upward direction and that will be the worst case, remember. This one will be the worst case. Okay, because in this case the body of the dam moves in upward direction and as it is moving in upward direction it decreases the load of the dam, the weight of the dam. Once the weight of the dam decreases, this means that uh, it, uh, the stability issue will come, will be more stable because there is, you know, there is hydrodynamic pressure, water hydrostatic pressure, similarly waves pressure and other some pressures and you, your body moving in upward direction, okay. So that's why basically the, the, the weight of the, the body, okay, or the dam decreases and then those forces becomes dominant and they cause the failure of the, of the dam structure. Basically this is a gravity game in energy. Basically this thing happens. So we have to analyze the structure in this case. It's very, very, uh, very, uh, very important, okay. Although we consider both the cases, but this case is important. Okay, when the body of the of the dam moving in upward direction, very important. Okay, uh, so let's see. Uh, these initial forces are very impo important. Clear? And by W, W is the total weight of the dam, and alpha is the earthquake point pressure. Clear? Wave pressure is also generated. Remember, when there is, uh, you know, uh, there is wave generating in your uh, your water level. Okay, you see, these wells basically exert uh, an extra force, okay, an extra force, the distribution will be some, something like in this shape, okay, and they're exerting an another force basically. So, we determine the height of the well, that is HW, and then we find out the, the, the pressure which is exerted by the well, and the, the amount will be this one. PW, it is pressure due to well, uh, and it's magnitude will be equal to gamma W times HW gamma is the density of uh, specific weight, I think so. And uh, HW is the height of the valve. And there is an equation basically for the for the for the valve height equation, okay? And that equation you see here, this will be, will be the equation. And I also write down that one, okay, that valve equation basically you see here HW 0 0.032 times of V dot F plus 0 0.163 and uh, at the power 1 over 4. So what is V is the velocity of when, okay, and F is the fetch. A fetch is basically less than 32 kilometers, so you, you will use this equation. And F is greater than 32, we will use this one. Clear? HW is the height of well in meters, V is the when velocity in kilometer per hour, kilometer per hour, and F is the fetch of straight length of the water expansion. And this is the total pressure, remember PW 2.4, this is density, remember, HW, tons per meter square, remember, tons per meter square. This is pressure intensity, remember, not total pressure. This is pressure intensity, total pressure will be equal to 2000 times of HW square, remember. This is pressure, this is sorry, this is pressure and this is total pressure, remember, force, kg per meter, remember. Uh, kg per meter always we, we analyze the dam structure for one running foot or one running meter, okay? Because if I show you, let me show you, let's say this is my, uh, let's say this is my dam body, okay? And uh, let me show you this is my dam body, remember? We consider the width of the dam, okay? We consider the height of the dam. And as you see, the dam is extending in this direction, okay? The dam is extending in that direction. So here we basically continued it and we just consider, remember, one unit length of dam, remember, that is one meter or one feet, as we did in slab analysis or basically in beam analysis. We consider a unit length, okay? So you must remember this, clear? And the last, no, no the last, this is not last self pressure, okay? Because you see here, self is also accumulated on the upstream side of the dam, remember? Because as you see here that, for example, if I had, if I have a dam structure, okay? And self is basically coming from the forward areas and they are just starting, remember, uh, tilting here. So basically 
what they did, they exert a pressure both in this direction and both in vertical direction. Remember, horizontal and vertical direction. So you see the pressure of the tilt will be this one and it acts with a Remember this is basically a triangular shape, remember. And it acts with a distance of 6 by 3, remember, from the bottom. 6 by 3. Clear? But the total pressure was, let me show you here. Uh, let me rub it. This is the pressure, remember. This is the self pressure. Gamma sub, gamma prime basically. Gamma specific unit rate, but this is gamma submerged unit rate. This is submerged, okay? Not the other one. We have to calculate gamma submerged. And that is theta 1 plus minus sine and 1 plus sine, okay? Uh, when pressure is also considered and it is almost assumed to be 100 kg per meter square to 150, okay? And water pressure, I already discussed it, okay? Then we have stresses, okay? So these are the forces, remember. Different forces and these are very, very important. I do some example on it, okay? You must remember these forces. What are ice pressures and weight of dams will also be calculated, okay? And ice pressure, you see here, the amount of ice pressure is also uh, assumed to be 250 to 1500 kilometer per square meter, okay? So, for ice and for wind, basically, we assume things, okay? And the body forces, you know, the body weights, okay? As you see here in my, this presentation, body forces are body weight, basically. So, we will calculate it. You see all these forces in calculation, okay? Next lecture, inshallah. Here you see normal stresses and principal stresses. So, when we are doing basically the dam stability analysis, we have to calculate different um, stresses, okay? And those stresses basically, remember this is uplet pressure. We already, uh, I already discussed it, okay? Uplet pressure. And 1 over 2 times CBH density, remember? Okay? The C is basically equals to 1.0 or sometimes whatever the amount will be less, but mostly it is considered to 1.0. The pressure intensity coefficient of blood pressure coefficient. Now, we have to consider basically normal stresses, okay, which basically act at the heel and two of the dam. Now, what is heel and what is two of the dam? Let me show you. For example, this is my dam structure, okay. This is my dam structure, let's, okay. So, this point is basically called V. Clear? This is basically we call V. And this point is basically known to be 2. Okay, this is 2. Remember. Now, there is basically the weight of the dam. Okay. And there are so many forces which I explained acting over this dam. And gravity dam in this is basically the, the dam is designed in such a way that it basically uh, all the forces are acting at the bottom or the base of the dam. Remember. Now, once the, the total pressure which acts at the base, they are basically causing stresses at the bottom. Okay. So, there are normal stresses basically at heel and two. Okay. And there will be various distribution, remember. Okay. There will be pressure distribution, remember. We have this kind of pressure distribution. And uh, no, no, not in this shape. Okay. I'll rub it. Okay, this is, you can say, not fair. Remember, one, one kind of distribution will be somewhat like in this shape. One time of distribution will be some, sometimes will be, no, it is basically straight. You know, this point is basically here. Okay? And in some time, basically, pressure distribution, there are three cases, remember, where this will go to upside, remember. Here this is zero, remember. Here this thing is zero. Here is zero. Here you see, we need to design a dam structure that the stress distribution will be in this shape. And this shape of stress distribution is possible, remember, when your eccentricity basically is less than B over 2, remember. B is the width of the dam 
and two. Once you are, I will show you in calculation what is eccentricity and what is the poor two. But remember, we try to to bring our eccentricity less than the poor two. Okay. This this kind of distribution of stress is basically when there is uh, stress and there is zero stress. It is possible when your eccentricity equal to the poor two. Okay. And this is compression. Okay. This there is also compression. But here the stress is zero and still we have compression. But there is we have we are we have we have problem. Okay. Uh, there your eccentricity basically more than the poor two. Okay. Please check these limits. But I think here we have P is maximum are greater than the poor two. So what will happen? Tension is produced on the heat, and we don't design for such things because if tension is produced on the heat. It will causes bending of the heel, like in this shape, and it causes the crack at the heel. Okay, and that the failure of the dam basically starts. So here we have compression, and here we have tension. So we don't want to design the structure in this case. We always trying for to design the dam in this case or either in this case. But this one is most important. Remember. Now we have stresses at the heel. And we have stresses at the two. So at the heel, we have check for tensile stresses basically. So V, that is the total vertical load of the dam divided by V into one minus six V divided by V. And the at the two basically the same equation, but we, here we have plus sign. Okay. So you see in calculation that how we will check these limitations. The other stresses are principal stresses. And you all know the principal shear stresses, okay, major principal stresses uh, from Mohr circle. Remember that that Mohr circle is very important, okay. For example, let's I draw a differential surface, a differential body, okay. So you know this is the horizontal, and sometimes you see there are principal stresses which is acting in this shape, okay, in this shape. Remember, uh, these these uh, these forces may be compressive forces. This one may be compressive or may be tensile. Okay, so there are different combinations possible. But the this kind of very stresses basically, uh, you see, the body is mostly subjected to like this type of stresses. Remember, okay, tension or compression on both side or all side. Okay, so different com configuration may possible, but This kind, but in this kind of stresses basically exert. So this is these are known as principal stresses. Almost I think so 45 degree are you can you can determine this angle, which is the principal angle. Okay, from calculation. But I don't want to explain these things. Okay, uh, it's too interesting. So please go to your mechanics of solid. Okay, where there is full explanation on these equations. But let me show you. Sigma one is principal stress. Tha is basically shear stresses. Okay, and sigma one, that is the principal stress. Okay, p in secant square pi minus p tangent square pi. Remember, general principal stress equation. This is general principal stress equation. Okay, if we have no tail water, what is tail water? Let me show you. For example, this is my dam structure. Okay, so you see, some although We have still water here, but remember, let's say this is the dam body. Remember, sometimes water will be here. Remember, this is called tail water. Okay, and that tail water basically exert a pressure in this direction, which causes stabilization of the dam structure. So that is basically known as tail water. So if tail water is present. Is not present, so in that case, basically we have to use this equation for principal stresses. P in the normal stresses, as we see, we calculate it. Okay, we calculate it here. We calculate it here. These these are the P in where P in. Okay, and if you are calculating principal stresses at heat, so then you have to P in heat, and if you are calculating principal stresses at two, so then you have to use P in. That is normal stresses at two. Okay, so 
this is principal stresses at the heat uh, at the two sorry at the two when we have when generate less okay and when we have no tail water if c is prime is the hydro dynamic intensity and downstream yes if there is no if we consider the hydro dynamic intensity on the tail side as well so then we have to incorporate for c e prime remember okay sigma 1 is basically uh, will become like will be looks like this one okay this formula will be used in that case when you have let's say this is your earthquake uh, your dam body okay and you have water here okay and here you have tail water okay so due to tail water you have a pressure that is p okay and if there is an you are considering earthquake so due to earthquake you know hydrodynamic pressure and for tail water hydrodynamic pressure is denoted by p e prime clear and as here you see we have hydrostatic pressure as well as due to earthquake analysis we have to consider hydrodynamic pressures and that hydrodynamic pressure is basically denoted by p e uh, sometimes we write y okay so if we are calculating the the, the, the stresses principal stresses sigma 1 at the 2 basically are at the downstream side and we considering the tail water the hydrodynamic pressure then this equation will be used remember same cases will be for upstream side okay but this sign will be positive and now we now we have basically not p e prime but we have p e okay so that's why you see here okay the same equation remember so these are important these are important okay note for upstream side p is less than sigma 1 this point is very important and i will show you in equation in, in problems as well that sometimes uh, this is also this is the principal stress remember this is the principal stress so principal stress means these are the major stresses maximum stresses but sometimes when we doing analysis basically for a dam structure for heat basically we are calculating sigma 1 here so the sigma 1 value basically which we calculate here is lesser than the p p is what p is the hydrodynamic uh, the, the hydrostatic pressure p this one this is p okay so the p value at this case basically it is more than the sigma 1 so in that case basically it will basically your p will be your principal stress not sigma 1 will be your and I will show you this point in my in, in a problem okay so don't you need to be confused okay I will explain this point okay and so sigma 1 is a minor principal stress and p is a major principal stress remember in that case because the maximum value of that uh, p okay now are the shear stresses now shear stresses p in minus p tangent by for downstream side only and for upstream side you have to just reverse the direction that is negative sign okay so for this this is for e or upstream and this is for 2 or you can say downstream okay and considering if you are considered the hydrodynamic pressure then you have to introduce or incorporate you have to uh, p e prime and i already explained this point so you see here top star will be this one you have to incorporate p e prime like as we did in principal stresses for downstream side and p e basically for upstream side prime means for down and no prime means for upstream side clear some important terms uh, this is these are very important because when we are doing the stability analysis we are checking that whether the dam is safe or not safe so in that case x prime is basically summation of m movements divided by summation of all vertical forces e that is in centricity very important e is nothing is d over 2 minus x prime and remember if i show you let me show you for example this is my dam okay this is my dam and remember the dam having vertical resultant forces this is these are horizontal direction and we have in vertical direction we, we find out the, the resultant force that is r now 
this is the midpoint or you can say centroid. So from centroid we basically calculate this x prime, where this x prime, okay. So this x prime is basically, I think it, it, uh, it explained uh, the distance that where your x r lies, okay. So this is x prime and E is basically is the eccentricity, remember. This E is measured from centroid, okay. This E is basically measured from centroid. This is E. So this E is nothing. It is basically equal to U or 2 times minus X prime. Okay. So I will show you inshallah these, these points. I will explain these points and these problems. Okay. So you don't need to be confused. Okay. Next we have factor of safety. That is summation of uh, turning movements to the... Uh, I will show you R stand for restoring movements, okay? Because there are, we have movements like uh, some movements causing the overturning of the dam and some movement causes the restoring of the movement. For example, you see the water pressure, the hydrodynamic pressure, these are causing the overturning. So those are movements that are denoted by N0. But there are the weight of the, weight of the dam and as once we provide basically the, that sloping side, so there is other weight so these weights basically causing the the restoring movement. Okay. So basically the, the ratio of the restoring movement to the overturning movement we can say is a factor of that. And it must be more than 2 or 2.5. Okay. Sliding factor is uh, the you see there are horizontal different horizontal forces like hydrostatic pressure, hydrodynamic pressure, ice pressure, cell pressure. So due to these horizontal forces, the body of the of the dam uh, is slide along the base of the footing. Okay, along the base, you can say our footing is is sliding in this direction due to those horizontal forces, and we have to check it. Okay, and for that, new summation of V times okay divided by summation of H, and this new is basically considered is uh, is taking 0 0.65 to 0 0.75. Clear? Now, the other thing is the, the other thing is the shear fraction factor and that is a new summation of V plus V Q divided by summation of H and Q is the shear strength and its values of will be taken as 14 kg per centimeter square, remember. And this ends up the calculation, all the, the stability analysis basically, we will, we will explain these in problems, okay. And, uh, these are the forces. You must remember these forces and in next video inshallah I will do an example, okay. So this will be example, okay, and I will take this example, okay. I will show you how to utilize these forces and how to utilize these equations. So see you in next video. Please watch this, this, uh, this video. Remember all the forces and next inshallah we will organize it. Thank you for watching.